Hi, this is Erin. You're listening to Glass Half Broken, a modern media podcast for the realist. I'm Colin. And, uh, and Tom is sick. Tom is, in fact, sick, so it is going to be a, a two-person podcast between myself and the other person in the podcast, which is Aaron. <laughs> yes, indeed. He messaged and said he felt like double garbage. Double garbage. That's more than one garbage. Yeah. That's twice the garbage. It's <laughs> twice the... Is it like a double coupon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I actually don't know what a double coupon is. I don't actually really know either. I mean, I think it's just when you stack up two coupons. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's... <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, hey, so, double. Double, yeah, I guess you can kind of do that with anything then. Yeah. You just probably put something on top, you know, the same thing on top of the thing that it is, and then say that the, the it's double a d- thing with the thing that it is. <laughs> this is a great start. It's right. So how was your uh, your week? Uh, it's pretty good. Um, I've got a few things to talk about. Uh, Wonderful. I, I, at first I was uh, afraid because I was just like, oh, I've got too many things to talk about, and then Tom exploded, and so... <laughs> Into double garbage. Into double garbage. So I was just like, all right, now you know. I guess to to make up for um, for him, I uh, I can I can talk about a bunch of stuff. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Indeed. So how are, how are you? I'm good. I uh, uh, yesterday was my birthday. I had a very nice day. And happy birthday to you. Thank you. You. <laughs> Excuse me. Um. And yeah, I've just been just being me. I did see a really awesome movie though a couple nights ago. All right, why don't we start off with uh, what, with with that? Because <clears throat> I got nothing, you know. Oh. Uh, I've got I've got nothing else going on other as far than, as like new things. Other like, than yeah. new things, I went to work and then I came home and I wasn't at work anymore. That that's that's you, what happens. That's what happens. So um, <laughs> so anyway, um, continue, please. All right, um, I saw Interstellar. Okay. Have you seen that? No, it's, no. it's like the only it's. It's like one of the only Christopher Nolan movies I haven't seen. It is very good. I thought it was really good. Um, I always uh, get a little um, turned off by the length of movies just because <laughs> I'm like, ah, uh, that's a lot of time invested. This was an almost three hour movie. Okay. And I actually, I stayed awake the whole time. <laughs> wow. I watched it at night. <laughs> <laughs> And no, it was uh, it was really good. It mm-hmm. was um, I, I'm not sure really what to say about it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not as good as uh, explaining uh, <laughs> movies especially, especially as well. Explaining angrily about things, right? Because I, I'm not angry about this movie at all. I thought it was thought it was great. So I guess I'm just gonna have to say, see Interstellar. It was. Uh, you, well, what, I don't well, know. Yeah, what was it? What was it? So, what, okay, the synopsis was distant future. Uh, resources are pretty much just all dried up. You know, is this yet again one of a uh, you know dystopian future movies? And right. and so at first I, I I was a little wary of it, thinking that you know I'm like, all right, how many of these damn movies are they going to make and have it yeah. be the same? Um, but it actually it was it, it was very different, I think. Um, although it, it had a lot of elements of 2001: Space Odyssey. Okay. Yeah, very very similar actually. But I was yeah, I was able to understand this movie though. So that was <laughs> <clears throat> that's a plus. So it's distant future. Um farmers are are uh more valuable than scientists and engineers and mm-hmm. so really the world is kind of looking at farmers as the you have to save us because right. our our resources are, are gone. And you know and, what you know what you're doing and yeah. right and yeah. and so uh, NASA is now an underground a secret agency because you know everyone's they're like well why would I I'm not going to fund or I'm not going to put money right. into NASA when we have no food <laughs> right you know so yeah. um, and so a lot of you know kids aren't able to really go to college anymore for anything else but farming and <laughs> so it's a uh, yeah, so it's just pretty much just one big Midwest cornfield, the uh, the whole world. So what NASA is trying to do is find a habitable planet for everybody to go zoom off and, okay. and live. Um, so it yeah, it's Matthew McConaughey, uh, Anne Hathaway, um, what the hell, Matt Damon okay. is in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it. It's just it's a really good. Really good cast, and I really, I mean, I, I think it was just a very good movie. Um, I don't know what else really to say about it. 
<laughs> because I'm not I'm not angry about it, so I'm not. <laughs> See, I think that's our our both of our things. Right. Like we have more to say if we're just pissed. Be like, okay, right? It's like let me first tell of all, you. <laughs> Matt Damon's head is like a fucking potato. Or right. I don't know. Um, I know, so I feel like I I don't have much to say of, as far as like, well, I don't want to give this away, or I don't, you know. But then, okay, I, like, I, it's like, a Christopher Nolan film, so that yeah, it, it is. Oh, there's twists and turns. Yeah. And there's, oh, it's just it, it's very interesting. Yeah. So it's like I don't want to sit here and he's be like, well, better, let me lay it all out for you. Yeah, he's he's a better like M Night Shyamalan, you know, like oh, like, most definitely. He, he, both of them are kind of similar in the way they make films, but I think Christopher Nolan actually, you know, pulls you know, it this off kind and, of was a little bit like Signs. At really? First. Right. Of I, I'm thinking, you know, because there was a couple of things that happened. And I'm like, all right, is this going to be like a cheesy M Night Shyamalan? Shyamalan? Yeah. I actually, I still, Sha- I still, yeah, I actually, I've heard Shyamalan and then Shyamalan, and uh, so yeah, so I've, I've, I've heard it, and so somebody, uh, somebody once said like Shyamalan, or something like that, but so it's like, uh, I have actually no idea the exact pronunciation of his, of his name. Anyway, as you're saying, All right. I, yeah, I don't know how to say his name. I, I've heard Shyamalama Ding Dong, which is probably my favorite. <laughs> the racist one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not. I didn't. I didn't make that up. Yeah. No. And no, that's not my favorite. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> that's horrible. Uh, and, and yeah. Anyway, that is. Uh, I, I, I need to. I need to find a movie that I'm passionately uh, against, because then I would. I think well, I would have know, more. <laughs> as, as as the realist, though, as as the the, the middle ground, though. That's that true. It's it's. Um, well, I mean, like, yeah. Once again, like, uh, the going back to the whole Christopher Nolan thing, like, yeah, it it is kind of. I, I I will give you that it is very hard to talk about a lot of his movies without mm-hmm. just, you know... Blowing it. Blowing, like, because he'll, he'll put, like, spoilers at the beginning of the movie, so it's like, well, this begin this happens, like, the first ten minutes, but, you know... He's like, I can't tell still, you that. You know, you know, yeah, it's definitely, like, uh, trying to explain <clears throat> Inception uh, to some people. I'm just like, you know what? It's probably better to just go in not knowing that much about it, because, right. like, yeah, it, or else it's just, like... I've only seen it once. I actually need to see it again because I that's, think it's a, a multiple viewings movie. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a lot of his movies. Mm. He um, he did Memento, right? Yeah, that was he did him. Memento. Yeah, so that's another one where <clears throat> you can't really explain that at all. Yeah, all I, 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 all I can me. say is that like <clears throat> it's like a revenge <clears throat> drama, um, and the film is backwards. Like it's, it starts it with the last scene, and then it it uh, it. Um, that's true. That's... Yeah, and then like it ends with the uh, the first and. Um, it's it was the the interesting thing about that is is the way that he gets around because there are scenes that are going forward and scenes that are going backward. It actually isn't completely backwards, and it's just the the colors the scenes that are in color are going backwards. The scenes that are in black and white are going forwards, and it's interesting yeah. the, the way that they're puzzled in there. And then uh, at one point uh, uh, towards the end of the film, the, those two parts converge, and the black and white scenes turn into color. And then like and it's so it's 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 yeah it's it. it I'll just I'll just say that was an interesting way to to do that uh, because mm-hmm. it's like if they, they hadn't done that or if you know if uh, Christopher Nolan hadn't done that it would have been a little bit more I mean you still would have like figured that out but at the same time like, it would have been a little bit more confusing and and I, I think I, I, there's a certain point I, and no one is really good at this um, is like you, you you want you want your your viewers to think and you you, know, you you do but like it he he's not trying to dumb it down. He just at one point wants people to concentrate on certain things. Like right. it's like all right now I just want people to concentrate on the story, or I want people to concentrate on characters and not have to go like wait, what just happened in that last scene? What was that? Does it was that symbolic of something or something like, right, like yeah. yeah? And so then at that <clears> point you're not really paying attention to like other parts of the film, um, which is a problem with uh, some. There are a lot of other filmmakers that uh, want to make their films as cryptic as humanly possible, and all you're thinking about is, like, like how, how, how can I piece together this puzzle? Like Donnie Darko. Oh, yeah, or something like that, where it's just, where, yeah. I do like that movie, but yeah, it took a, a couple right. of times. Yeah, I mean, it's I think it's one of those those cult favorites, you the, know? Yeah, it's, that, a... like, it's not as great as a lot of people considered it. Right, yeah. but it's, I don't know, it's enjoyable. It's, it's, it's an entertaining it took, film. It took me, oh, I don't know how many viewings of Memento, probably about four, <laughs> to really, you know, I think it was about, it was the fourth time I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, I, I think it took about, like, two two tries just because, it's like, it was like, I watched it once, and I think I watched it, like, like again the next day, because mm-hmm. I didn't see it in theaters. I wanted to see it when it was in theaters, um, and um, but then I, I, I ended up um, renting it with uh, with Tom, and a bunch of other other friends, and we watched it. Um, 
And it's funny is that he, um, for some, <laughs> Tom decided that he was going to use the, go to go to the bathroom, and he told us, "Oh, you don't have to pause it." <laughs> it's just like. All right. Yeah, so, that's a, a, so, not a movie you, you can yeah. just not pause. So like, so he he went to the bathroom for you know thirty seconds. And he you know, went there, went to the bathroom, came back, and then it was like, all right, what I miss? And just like rewind it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I hate that. Like you told me not to pause. Yeah. So I'm not gonna sit here and recount. Oh no, I mean he probably didn't. He probably didn't say what I missed, but I th- it was probably one of those things where like he came back <laughs> in the room and we're all like just rewind it because we're not going to explain because you're not going to understand anything that's going on now <laughs> i think i did actually i mean the first time i did see it i i i got a pretty good grasp of it but it, it it's one of those where also i just really enjoyed the movie and i wanted to oh, yeah. see it again and i think i i feel that way with a lot of christopher nolan's movies where it's He's... you know even if even if you get it the first time, it's like, yeah, well, that was just really good. I want to see it again anyway. He's yeah, he makes very entertaining films, and that's the thing. Like he doesn't make like like it's it's smarter than your like because you look at something like like Inception, like that's just an action movie. Like really, if you yeah. really think about it, it's an action movie, but it's it's a um, it's a, a very well thought out, very cle- like his movies are clever. Mm-hmm. Like, I wouldn't say they're, they're they're smart, but they're they're clever. Right, they're cleverly written and and. Uh, and and things like that, but like it's it's definitely not a you know art house just like mind blowing like whoa I got changed my life now. Let's so say you, you go there and afterwards you're like wow that was interesting you know, yeah like, yeah and yeah. that's why I, you I, don't feel deeply disturbed when you go home. <laughs> it's like yeah it's, it's, it's not like Gaspar <clears throat> No or like some other like uh, the directors where you're just like whoa Jesus I gotta <laughs> fucking <laughs> I gotta rethink things now. <laughs> And I think, and he never tries to do that. Like he he knows what he wants to do, and he knows what kind of movies he, that he's good at making. Mm-hmm. And so he's just like, oh yeah, I'm I'm good at making these kinds of kinds of movies. And uh, and he, and he's not like M Night Shyamalan, where he just he has to have like a, a twist in every film and everything like that. And right. like a lot of his some of those movies are just like oh they're just they're he does make fairly straightforward movies at times. I mean you you gotta look at like the Batman movies, fairly straightforward. Uh, you know, but they're well well they're done. well written well written yeah. yeah. I don't know the Dark Knight Rises. I wasn't a big fan of. I is, didn't see it. That's the third one. Mm. It's kind of a mess. It's is just it? It, well, because well, the thing was it, he he had originally planned for um, the third one to also have the Joker, but then Heath Ledger died. Right. So like I'll, like you can I I, I theorize. You I kind of feel that void. A yeah, bit. like yeah, I, I theorize. I don't really know exactly what 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 went on with that, but like I think like because of that he had to kind of rewrite the script and he had he probably had to retool a lot of things mm. and it just it kind of feels cluttered and it feels it doesn't, that's too bad yeah like catwoman is in it and she you know and anne, anne hathaway is as catwoman and she, you know she's not you know she's just kind of there i don't really buy her as catwoman she's fi- she's fine as, as catwoman really? i think okay but um but it's just like her character the character well i mean is, you've got michelle pfeiffer and then you got anne hathaway <laughs> where it's just like a completely well, this, different type of women but at the same time like you know, like they are these are different versions of these batman characters yeah. you know like that was a, a way different joker than what people were used to and so I, I i i bought it and i thought it was it was all right and but like but yeah at the same time like character wasn't really that important to anything and um yeah, Tom Hardy as Bane. Tom Hardy's fantastic. Uh, I love Tom Hardy, um, but um, him as Bane, just him doing this voice the entire movie, Ooh. <laughs> like is 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 just very silly and it's just very you know because he has the mask on his face. So mm-hmm. and you're like, what did he just say? <laughs> I need subtitles. I'm in a movie theater. Like, <laughs> I can't rewind that. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's like it's. It's not great. Like I, I would say that that's that's probably Christopher Nolan's worst movie, um, uh, and but I don't think it's terrible. But it's 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 like I found it more entertaining because it was kind of funny, unintentionally funny. Uh-huh. And um, like there's a part where uh, uh, somebody said like you know like uh, what uh, I forget the exact thing where he's just sort of like uh, what would happen if uh, uh, I would take that mask off your face? And he's just sort of like it would be very painful. And and then uh, he's just like really. Like, really? He goes, for you and like it was it was just a very <laughs> and like i was like whoa it sounds like a, an adam sandler character oh, yeah, like he, he kind of has this like sean connery kind of thing going on or like a like a gandalf the with the great so like, uh-huh. or, or gandalf the, the wizard type of like voice of just like very wise old man and you're like batman you know? and um 
Yeah, and but it's yeah. So it's I, I would still recommend it because it it is you know kind of it, it gives closure to the Batman story. Mm-hmm. But um, the Dark Knight is, is the best one. Uh, Batman Begins I, is pretty is pretty good too. But um, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely say it. like I I saw I was very disappointed in Dark Knight Rises. Ah, uh, that's too bad. I do yeah. I liked the Dark Knight. Um, and oh, I did see Batman Begins. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah someone those... with uh, Cillian, uh, Cillian Murphy as the, the Scarecrow. Oh, oh yes, and yeah. then Liam Liam mm-hmm. Neeson. And then there, I thought he was a pretty good kind of over the top uh, villain, um, which is, I guess, a, li- a lot of people complained that it was a little out of place. That like, the, like Christopher Nolan tried to make this semi realistic Batman story, and then the last half of the movie is is just is just nuts and crazy and like. But yet, that uh, makes sense though for a Batman movie. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I think I, this... I wouldn't like it if it were all just a straightforward, yeah, normal um, movie. <laughs> but I think somebody once said, I think it was uh, the guys at uh, Red Letter Media had mentioned it could also be somebody else too but um someone had mentioned that like it would be kind of awesome if somebody made a batman movie and he was just going after like legit criminal like he was just going after like the mob or something Mm -hmm. like that and just like like, i agree i think you know instead of just having like a crazy over-the-top villain yeah maybe something like that would be interesting and that's what they kind of try to do with the beginning of uh, batman begins with him and uh uh, the Tom Wilkinson as like you know the uh, the, like, the mob boss, uh, but then of course then you have Scarecrow and uh, R- Ross Al Ghul or Rachel Ghul or however you pronounce yeah, the Liam right. the Liam Neeson character. <laughs> um, oh, that that is, that is a spoiler I think, but eh, yeah, damn it, it's a ten year old movie at this point. <laughs> if you haven't seen it by now, <laughs> it's, it's, Liam Neeson is, is 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 yeah, it's not Ken Watanabe as as uh, you're supposed to think at the beginning of the film. Anyway. <laughs> Way to go! Way to go! Yeah. Also, he 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 stops the bad guys in the end of the film and saves the day. <laughs> Spoiler! Wow! Just <laughs> yeah, it's a ten-year-old movie. Who yeah. really? Who gives yeah, a shit? I, I want to say yeah. It came out in two thousand five. Yeah. So. So you said that you had some other things uh, that you yeah. had on on uh, on deck. Yeah, to I talk have about. a few things to talk about. Um, so first off, um, we'll, we'll get the game one out of the way. Okay. You know, like the last. Two episodes. Well, actually, for, first off, I wanted to do a, a, a retract something that I had said two episodes ago oh. when we we're talking about Tomorrowland. I had said that it was uh, Jordan Peele that makes an appearance in, in, in Tomorrowland. It was, it was not. It was actually uh, Keegan Michael Key. So it was it was Key, not Peele. I said I kept saying Peele. Yeah. But I it, was th- and my brain was going. Now I can't focus. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> I but yeah no it was it was key it was not peel so I I just and and I, and I I I knew which one I was talking about but for some reason I said peel instead of key we're gonna get so many letters from the two people that listen to this yeah and it's not even gonna be like internet comments it's gonna be letters it's like, gonna be letter, our mailbox will be letters full. be like you said in the tomorrow d- during that episode how much you were a fan of key and peel and you can't even tell them apart <laughs> you racist, racist. bastard yes. <laughs> like, like, they could not look. <laughs> any different to like those two <laughs> well <laughs> but anyway right. it was it was key it was not peel okay. so i apologize to keegan michael key <laughs> and jordan peel who are listening right now hello listening hello <laughs> big fans <laughs> enjoy everything you do both of you are hilarious no matter which one you are <laughs> anyway um so anyway, um, uh, yeah. So I had a few things to to talk about. Um, one of them does have Jordan Peele in it, and it is Jordan Peele. <laughs> Are um, we sure? Yes. Okay. All right. But anyway, but I'll talk about the game because uh, I I didn't play that much of it, but I just kind of want to mention it. Uh, so over the weekend, um, Sony did a uh, every once in a while they'll do a flash sale on the PlayStation Store, mm-hmm. and basically that's just like you know for one weekend and one weekend only. Like the this list of games are crazy discounted. Um, so I lo- I was I looked into that and um, there was a game that I was half interested in, but I was just like I don't want to pay sixty dollars for it. Um, but over the mm-hmm. weekend it was twelve dollars, so I was just oh, like, oh, well, you kind of have to. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, that's right, bargains and all. <laughs> um, it was this game called Omega Quintet. Okay. And it was a weird and it's a weird little game. It's an anime style game. It's an R- it's an RPG. In which a uh, group of uh, adorable pop stars have to save the world using the power of music, <laughs> and it's very silly, and it's, it's about as silly as, as it sounds. And like I, I, you know, I had some friends that, that played it, and they said they enjoyed it, uh, and they they, they kind of like that kind of that kind of stuff. Um, 
like I'm not a, like like I used to be way more into anime than like now I'm a very casual anime fan like mm-hmm. I like I like I every once in a while we'll we'll watch something on Crunchyroll um which is that streaming anime service but like very rarely mm-hmm. um I just yeah I used to be Well you're in your 30s now you know things change. Yeah but you know, despite the fact that I'm, you know still way into video games and <laughs> just last week was talking about Mario Maker and, <laughs> and like with the excitement and enthusiasm of a 12 year old boy. Yeah but um so yeah so I I'm not super into anime that much anymore used to be like late 90s early 2000s was obsessed with anime and uh would go to all the conventions and and do all of that. Mm-hmm. Um but uh, so Omega Quintet, so yeah, it's basically a horrible apocalypse is kind of go, it's like in the pro, it's not post apocalyptic, it's kind of in the process of the apocalypse. Mm. Uh, and there are these horrible monsters that are taking over the cities. Um, but there are these these girls, these adorable young girls, they're like teenage, you know, like like mid to late teens type of uh, aged uh, girls, uh, called verse maidens. <laughs> And they're pop stars, and they sing, and their weapons are like you know microphones and instruments and things like that, and uh, and they do have like you know magical spells and things like that. But at the same time, like they just they use the power of, of friendship and music. Aww. And it's it's it, you it, wanted this game, and um, but uh, <laughs> and it was um, it looked it was it looked very silly. It's done by this company called Compile Heart, which um, does very like they do very tongue in cheek, uh, very self-aware kind of like anime style games that like i i i, I would keep seeing and be all like oh, that looks silly and uh, and over the top and crazy and uh about that and then like i would try it and be like this game isn't very good and um so i'd heard from from some friends that um and some people that like you're like it's that's actually pretty good and it is very you know self-aware of the ridiculousness of of the plot and it, it isn't um done like completely straight or anything like that that uh, and um but it's still very just like you know, like you, you, you like it's not uh, like a like legitimately like funny like like oh oh, oh these characters they've warmed my heart <laughs> like you know like they're playing the video like, like this is really stupid yeah and um, and they know it and so. and yeah they, they do know it and um but it's it's still the humor is still there's still something kind of lost in translation and and like they're they're definitely I was just, you know definitely playing this and like the actual like game elements is very very simple very just like you know you know just a very straightforward RPG, but um, like it was, it was just the, kind of the over the top nature of it that I was, I was interested in, and uh, I was just like, this is a really stupid plot, and this is a really like silly thing, and you know maybe it's you know like, it's 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 very hard to explain. Um, that it's just like you know like I, I don't. There are two people, two kinds of people that would play this game, and it's and the one of them is is the people that that own like the body pillows that have the anime girls on it and they're just like <laughs> they walk around with them and they're, they're, they're com- like completely unironically playing this going like oh this is so cute <sighs> <laughs> <sighs> as they're playing um and then, i'm yeah, very uncomfortable right now very uncomfortable <laughs> but um the ones that have like the little like anime dolls and they um and uh stuff like that but um and it's just that's creepy. But at this, uh, and then like, you know, people like you know, like then the other that type of person is is the one that just say like, this is a very over the top, very silly mm-hmm. kind of thing, and and uh, and uh, you know, that's it's you know, I I kind of want to see what kind of ridiculousness they do of just sort of like you know, like yeah, I just want to go in there and just and see them like singing, and then the beasts covering their ears going no, or, or like just something really silly like that, which I haven't you know, once again I haven't played that much of it. But, um, Which sounds like it's worth it for twelve dollars. For, for, certainly yeah. not sixty. For, yeah, it's like it's that's, that's the, that was the one thing a lot of reviewers were saying that like it was just like this is a, a, a kind of a funny, silly little adventure. Um, it's not worth sixty dollars, and and so it's yeah. just like for for twelve bucks, I was like I'll I'll buy it for twelve dollars. It's entertainment. Yeah, you know? and it's... Uh, and it's it's very yeah, it's, it's very you know, very silly and and uh, yeah, but um, yeah, I definitely uh, definitely not playing it like you know. The name uh, Omega Quintet. Yeah. Oh. So it's so it's a uh, it is a quintet of, of young ladies, <laughs> and um, well it's again like it's like it starts with like uh, one of them uh, like like the like the, the main major star uh, and uh, and she's like in her thirties by now and she's and she's just like she's she's you know puffing and puffing and trying to keep up and stuff like that and like and, and like and and she's and uh, like uh, her manager is just sort of like because uh, she's just, she's just trying to kill monsters she's, and save the she's world. She's too old shooter. 
Yeah, and the, <laughs> so, and like and then the the, uh, the managers are sort of like uh, like like we really need to get somebody else uh, new in here. Like uh, we, we we can't do any close ups anymore of you or something like that. And it's like weird stuff. Oh my like, God. like like it, it has this weird like almost commentary about uh, you know like pop stars and right, things like that. Right. So once you, you get hit a certain age, you might as well be yeah. know, eighty. Yeah, it's just sort of like and it, like you, you could almost imagine that this game started with like people like uh, like like. Uh, you know, pop stars fading, and then somebody going like, "It's like, well, they can still sing." You're like, what? They're not like out there fighting monsters or anything. And someone's just like, "That right there is it's precisely is the what video we game to make. is that we need to make or something like that." <laughs> so I don't know. It, yeah, it's it's a weird thing, and but I I don't know. Thus far, I, I don't hate it. <laughs> like, well, that's okay. in, in the hour and a half that I probably put into it, or like we're more than that. But um, <clears throat> anyway. I didn't plan on talking about it that long. It was, it was supposed to be a quick, like, hey, this is a silly little thing. I, I, was, I, was, I tried to... I don't think you ever really plan on talking long. Yeah. It just sort of happens. Yeah. So, all right. So that was, there was that. Um, maybe I'll play... I, I, it's actually, like... Like, like I, I think I bought it, like, almost right after we did, like, the last uh, podcast or, like, uh, you know, the weekend. And then, like, I played it for a bit. And then I just... I haven't played it since. Yeah. So I, who knows if I, I will actually get back into it. I've been mainly just playing Metal Gear Solid Five. Um and stuff like that but um anyway the uh the other thing uh, the 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 next thing that uh i watched all eight episodes of the wet hot american summer first day at camp oh i have not started that yet yeah and it's it is um and that one that does in fact have jordan peele in it <laughs> so we could even look it up you could look it up he's and, in it mm-hmm. yeah he's a he has a cameo appearance uh, so basically, all right. If you don't know, Wet Hot American Summer was a movie, uh, two thousand one. Uh, it was made by uh, Michael Showalter and David Wayne, uh, who did like the State and uh, like Stella. Stella and like all that with like Michael Ian Black. And um, it's basically just like um, the the movie from two thousand one is uh, is the last day at camp at a camp in like nineteen eighty one. Like it was, it was either eighty or eighty one. Um, so, yeah, yeah really. somewhere like early eighties. Um, and it was just basically. A bunch of crazy stuff happens. It's very silly, um, and is it is it's it's almost like a Zucker Brothers style of like it's very like nothing. It's, it's at, one, at one point like like they have to stop a meteor from you know <laughs> like oh yeah it's into... just it's all sorts of ridiculousness. I saw the movie. I thought it was great. Yeah, and um, yeah, and, and it is a star-studded cast of like you know <laughs> um, you have like Paul Rudd, you have Bradley Cooper, Amy Poehler. Um, you know, like in, you know, Elizabeth Banks. Elizabeth Banks okay. is, is is in it, and like, and so in in basically what it was was the um, if, uh, I might be wrong, but I I want to say it was it was kind of an Adam Sandler esque situation where like they all just wanted to hang out together. They were all friends, and so they're just like, let's make a movie, and and then they made a movie. But um, when they did it, it was it was amazing and it was hilarious. When Adam Sandler does it, it's not. It's just one big jerk off <laughs> session. Yeah, it's like, basically give just me your money. Yeah, it's just a circle jerk. And yeah, then it's... the audience is the one in the middle. Right, it's a, it jokes <laughs> on us. Cause, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, he's he's a very postmodern. He's a postmodern genius, Adam Sandler, in in the fact that like he makes these terrible movies and people keep oh, saying he's... them. Oh yeah, he's a genius. <laughs> that is true. You got to give him credit for it. <laughs> people keep saying his yeah. stupid fucking movies. I can't. I I don't even know what his last one was. I think Pixels. The... Pixels. That was the one with like all the video game characters attacked the world. Okay. And stuff like that. And um, what were the reviews on that one? Terrible. Yeah. Oh, they I, were supposed to be awful. <laughs> I, really? I mean, I, I, I think at this point, I mean, if his name is on it, it's going to be terrible. Like, it's, <laughs> yeah. I think maybe now he's just like he's pranking all of us. Well, it's like there was a um, there was a picture at, at, at the premiere of Pixels of him like giving me double peace signs. But he looks exhausted. He just, or he just looks like he just doesn't want to be there. He just, he, and it's mm-hmm. very off. It's not like, like, oh, you stare at it for a second, you're all like, oh, he seems unhappy. It's like right away, you're like, oh god, <laughs> he looks like he's ninety and he's doesn't Why know where does he, he is. Why does he keep doing? It's not like he needs the money, you know. It's like just you can live off of <laughs> of your fucking what was it, Jack and Jill money or whatever, wherever where it was his his sister that came. Yeah, for, yeah. I, I mean, I didn't see it because. Yeah, I have um, my dignity standards, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I yeah, I don't know. Like yeah, we 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 talk about we we 
it, it's it's one of those things where it's like and usually I would feel bad about sh- shitting all over like movies that I haven't seen. <laughs> for some... That's pretty safe assumption, <laughs> though. Safe assumption that it's not very good. <laughs> we could go ahead and shit on it. Um, anyway, so anyway, back to Wet Hot American Summer. Ah, um, yes. So yeah, the movie. The, the, it like I. I want to say I could be wrong, but I, I want to say it was that. Oh, sorry, I'm tapping on the table. Yeah, that's all right. Um, You're getting getting into it. Yeah, uh, and I, uh, uh, yeah, I want to say it was it was kind of that situation where they're all they were all friends. They wanted to get together and they made this movie. And it was a very silly movie, but it was very you know it was it was funny. It was good. It, it, there's there's comic timing. There are jokes in it, and you well, know because they all have talent. Yeah, they're all incredibly talented. And they people. work well off each other. Uh, so anyway, so now. This is many, many years later, um, but it's a uh, it, a prequel uh, to Wet Hot American Summer, and it takes place on the first day of camp of that same camp oh. in the from the early early eighties and like either eighty or eighty one, um, and it's kind of uh, it's kind of funny because back then it was crazy that it was like oh all these thirty somethings playing these like. 16, now it's all these 40-somethings. 40 40s and, like, I want to say some of them are in their 50s now. Like, <laughs> and what's the crazy thing about it? Paul Rudd looks exactly the same. I th- he's a time traveler, I he's think. A, he's it? gorgeous. He's always been gorgeous. I know. It, well, he's like Keanu Reeves, where it's, I think yeah. he's a vampire. Yeah, true. Yeah, Keanu Reeves, like... Just, Immortal. Yeah, just recently I, I saw the movie uh, John Wick, and uh, he, he looked great. Oh, yeah. He was great. That's a great movie, too. I might talk about that another thing, but I actually really like John Wick. Oh, okay. Um, but maybe that'll be a, another time. Um, but, um, but yeah, the first day at camp, uh, is, is, is just, it's, it's really funny. And, uh, the thing about it is the one, one thing that I was kind of worried about was that it's been so long since the first one that like, you know, maybe it's not going to be as funny. Maybe it, you know, there's not going to be as much of, you know, chemistry between, you know, the characters or, you know, or the actors, you know, Bradley Cooper and Paul Rudd are both big name celebrities now. Right. Um, yeah. the, the first one was Bradley Cooper. I don't think he was a... He wasn't a household name at that no, point. No, no, nobody, yeah, not at all. nobody knew who Bradley Cooper was yeah. when the first one came out. Um, and uh, so, uh, like the the thing about it is that like it's it's kind of it's kind of weird how there's a cast of that that's that big, and it never really feels like any scene with any character is forced. Like it never feels like they're just like, all right, we we have to have something for this character to do, or like, mm-hmm. oh, we haven't you know done that. And even though that might have been the case of what, the way they wrote it, of just like, man. Elizabeth Banks' character hasn't done anything in like two episodes, and you know we, we only have eight episodes to work with. Let's get her to do something. Um, it, it doesn't feel that way at all, and um, it, uh, it the, everyone kind of gets like even screen time, and uh, so you, you'll have like Michael Showalter and his like girlfriend, and there's like you know there's there's like a uh, you know weird like uh, stuff going on with them, and um, then there's like. Uh, Janine Gar- Jean Garofalo and uh, Jason Schwartzman uh, ah. are, is, is in the, and they're, they're, um, they have trouble with the government. He and, wasn't in the first. He was not in no. the first one. Okay. Um, there's a lot like okay, so yeah, Jordan Peele is in it, and he was you know, he was not in the first one. Mm. Um, mainly, you know, I mean, he was probably still like in college at the time. Yeah. Like, he, he, Jordan Peele's a younger guy. I think he's, he's like 34, 35 years old, mm. something like that. So um, uh, anyway. Uh, then uh, Chris Pine is in it, um, who, okay. who, who he played, uh, you know, it's Captain Kirk in the new Star Trek movies. Yes, okay. and, um, and then like John Hamm is in it. Um, a bunch of people from Mad Men, like John Slattery is in it. Really? Uh, and um, like uh, who else? Uh, Weird Al Yankovic is in it. Um, yeah, there's there's a, yeah, there's just a ton of just, just a like a, a ton of like uh, cameo appearances. Michael Sarah is also in it uh, now. Wonderful. And, and um and they're all great and they all and they all like really like like everyone seems like they want to be there and everyone's having so much fun with it and it's it's just like and it's that that's what's great about this i love seeing that yeah and like and like like you know like uh uh, chris pine uh isn't like super fantastic but like his character you you can tell like this is something he wanted to do like he's like you can tell like he was he's, he's his character isn't like super hilarious or anything like that but he does have a few jokes here and there but like he, he just he has that enthusiasm and uh mm-hmm. and like everyone has that enthusiasm and like uh bradley cooper um you know like like yeah you wouldn't you you wouldn't know going from if you were to like watch the first movie and then watch uh the series that just like you know bradley cooper went on to, to be a big right, actor he became this big star he yeah he, he never he never once acted like like he was like too good for this or anything like that in fact he had a very silly scene with michael ian black um, where they both share a zoot suit, 
basic like it's like a, a special suit for like a musical number or something like that and like very silly things like that and like in and um all right i'm definitely gonna have to watch it and uh yeah and it's and um the one the one thing though i'll say uh is that like you do it to, to understand a lot of the jokes you do kind of have to see the, the movie because mm-hmm. there are a lot of like it does play off of the idea of like you know all right we're setting up these things for since it is a prequel like this right. you know for for that like um I'm gonna have to rewatch the first one I can't remember I I think I saw it probably about ten years ago yeah and um the uh and that's and like so yeah like the Christopher Maloney character who was in who played like the the rough Vietnam vet in the first movie uh or like in the in the movie. Um, when you meet him again in the the series, he's very happy and very like he's like oh sorry that so you're like so you're you're like, well, wondering like all right by the end of the series he's, he's gonna have yeah. to get into that so so and, what made him so grizzled yeah so in and there's a um yeah there's a lot of humor for that and like there's there's a a callback to um like like in the first movie um Christopher Maloney like humps the fridge and like and it was and it was like this big it was like this big uh like he he gives this big speech of like you know. You know, like to to to, to you know to, to be yourselves to really you know like and and everyone like applauds is now excuse me I'm gonna go hump the fridge and then they, they wheel out the fridge and he like grabs it and he starts humping it and they start wheeling it away off screen <laughs> and at, at one point in the show uh, in the first day of camp um uh, like he's actually fighting somebody and uh, and at, at one point uh, he uh, he like gets slammed into the, uh, the the fridge and he goes like oh hey baby and then, like it's, so it's like it was like kind of a, like yeah so. <laughs> Kind of like a a little little in joke, you know, for and and that that happens a lot uh, in, in during that. So I'll I'll say that like you know just know yeah, that watch this the is, movie first. And watch then... the movie first, okay. then then watch the show. Um, so um, sounds like a good Friday night. Yeah, and uh, it's yeah, so it's so it is eight episodes. So it's like yeah, like a like a ninety minute movie and an eight episode show all at once. <laughs> <laughs> Stay awake. <laughs> That's a lot of very silly. <laughs> Over the top humor. They'll have very weird dreams. Yeah, that's right. Mainly of Paul Rudd. Aww. But that's not anything new for me. <laughs> I think Paul Rudd is is is, is super sexy. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I would agree. I like you're thinking, like I I like I didn't think that anybody could beat off beat off you know, <laughs> beat off Paul Rudd. <laughs> I was I was gonna make a I was gonna make a dick Is joke. A and you, I, I, I was gonna slip? make a dick joke, but I made a different dick joke accidentally. Wow! So anyway, that deserves a prize. Yeah, but uh, but anyway, uh, but the, you know, basically what I was gonna uh, I was gonna say that like I didn't think anybody could top Paul Rudd in just like the charismatic, comedic actor. Uh, but then Chris Pratt came along, and Chris I think Pratt. Chris Pratt is awesome. Everyone loves Chris Pratt. He's great. He is. He he even like we should I, have him on the show. <laughs> but um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so like I'm just like man, and and the two are friends too. Chris Pratt and Paul Rudd are are, are like oh, that makes sense. know each other, and uh, and I, I remember when um, they seem like there was an baby inter- friends. Yeah, there was an interview with Paul Rudd um, saying when he was uh, trying to train for uh, the Ant Man role, like he had to kind of like buff up a little bit, and so he said he had to like call up uh, Chris Pratt, and be like, "What did you do to get so buff?" And, <laughs> and uh, I know uh, that that transformation is probably one of the best in Hollywood I've ever seen. I mean, he's, he was, you know, a cute, doughy kind of guy, you know, when he was on Parks and Rec at, yeah. at the very beginning of it. And, yeah. And, yeah, an unknown. And, and I, I thought he was adorable then. But, yeah, I never would have, would have thought, like, oh, that's a that's a sexy man yeah. right there. And then, yeah, he uh, for Guardians of the Galaxy, he just yeah, buffed up. And then all of a sudden, like, and now we have the newest action star yeah it's yeah, just was, it's crazy he, he was the best part of uh jurassic world like i didn't i didn't really like jurassic world that much mm-hmm. um but um but he yeah he he did well he's he seems like one of those actors that like even in a movie that's not very good like he'll still give 110 percent. he'll still he'll still do it he'll still get get it done right and um it was it was, it was kind of weird this is it's unrelated but this made me think of this i was actually um uh I was talking with our, our dad about it um about this uh we're talking about alec baldwin and how <laughs> as curmudgeony and grouchy and grumpy as the man is like th- i don't think i've ever seen him ever phone it in in a movie he's always he's like he's he's, he's just seems he's very professional and it was one of those weird things where it's like he seems like the type of actor that would but like right. just recently i saw um, mission impossible rogue nation and um which is an all right movie like if, if, you, if you want another thing to talk about real quick that's it's an okay movie mm. tom cruise is choking out his lines 
Really? Like, he, he does not seem like he wants to do that anymore. I can't imagine so. I mean, that is... I, How I, many years now have they been milking this? I mean, like, yeah, mission, the first Mission Impossible I want to say was, like, 98. Like, 90, yeah, 97 it, or 98. He just needs to This is the fifth that. one. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, like, like, Alec Baldwin, like, he, like, he, he was, like, um, like, it's... Like he he played like this uh, like the director of like the CIA or like you know or like somebody like uh, you know some big wig and he kind of does this sort of like police chief thing of like damn it you know like like we're gonna uh, we're gonna have your badge for this or something like that and it's like <laughs> does he sit behind a desk most of the time uh no but like oh, he's but like bad. but he's actually like really good in it and he actually really it's a kind of a no- I think he's a great actor yeah and it's like he, he's kind of a it's kind of a nothing with nothing role but like he owns it like he's just sort of like <laughs> he's constantly like you know yelling at jeremy renner's character be just like I, I know you're hiding something Urgh! and like it's, it's great and so like and i was just like like man it's kind of weird that like this seems like the type of role that like an actor like alec Baldwin would be like all right we're fine let's get this over with right um but yeah yeah i, I think it's one of those um situations where the yeah the actor himself is i mean he's just he's an asshole from what i understand uh i don't know him personally so yeah, i yeah, can't yeah. say but um he, he seems kind he, of just he just keeps kind of like grouchy and kind of done like he he's he seems just like very done with he, things oh i mean or? he seems very real like he seems yeah. like and like which is kind of good actually you know like he, he he's he's not a phony at all mm-hmm. and he and he hates he, he lets he, it all out yeah and he hates phonies and so like that so he, he'll like he's totally... like uh jd salinger's uh catching the rye yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right why, why can't i think of his name holden caulfield yeah. right yeah hold on i gotta yeah i gotta look up i got a book hold all on. right yeah she has it over here all right let's be, wait, hang on hang on hold on he hates what? phonies he hates phonies he hates them Hates them. God damn phonies. Yeah, it's... Ho- Flipping through the pages Flipping right now as it. we speak. Uh, I've actually never finished Catch on the Rock. Oh, I've read it. A couple Wait. times, actually, and I still can't fucking remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> do, they, do they say it at all in the fucking... <laughs> <coughs> they better. All right, so anyway... I, anyway, go ahead. As, 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 as I was saying... um. So anyway, I was just talking about what was I talking about? We got, went off on the weird tangent. I don't know. We were talking about. Well, Tom, Tom, well I was, actually, Alec I wanted to go Baldwin. back to, to Tom Cruise real quick. Oh, right. um, That um, that yeah, like he really doesn't seem like he wants to be there. He's just kind of choking out his lines and just going just. And there's like a, there was like a there's one time I, I forget the line, but there was like a weird pause, and that and it was just sort of like that was the take they they used. It was just like it was just sort of like it's just like well, I need to go over there. Like it was like one of those things where I'm just sort of like. It's like that's no, the that's best not, that's you not, can do. <laughs> that's not the take you should use. <laughs> um, but um, my thought with that was that like they should they should, you know because they're going to keep making Mission Impossible movies. I think they should do a James. I think they should just pull James Bond and recast uh, Ethan Hunt as uh, and then and like and just basically just be like all right and yeah keep it going that way. Well, because the thing is, it's like it's every single every single movie is a different director and different writer and they kind of do the James Bond thing where they get these kind of well-known directors to come in and try and put their own spin on the James Bond character and like like the first Mission Possible was Brian De Palma you know like the you know Scarface you know like the, the mm-hmm. you know, that 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 uh, you know uh, kind of director and then the second one was John Woo mm-hmm. who you sat next to I did while you watched Mission Impossible 2 yes yes I did um, I was right there was there was a screening uh, I went with uh uh, oh, my friend Jay, mm. and it, this was in 2000, and there was a screening of Mission Impossible 2, which uh, I, he'd gotten tickets for, and, and so we uh, we went there, and, and it was a packed theater, and then all of a sudden Tom Cruise comes out, and everyone's going insane, and there's little little Tom coming in <laughs> just for, you know, two minutes. He introduces the, the movie, and then he goes and flies away on his jetpack, um, <laughs> and... Yeah, and then, uh, so my friend Jay and I are just sitting up at the balcony, whatever, the, I, I don't know, There's, there was no balcony, what am I saying? <laughs> it was just stadium seating, it was a regular theater, um, and, uh, so then he just sort of, he looks to his left, and, uh, he's just like, I, we're, we're fucking sitting next to John Woo right here, <laughs> like, because we didn't even realize it, oh yeah, because Tom Cruise was like, and then the director, uh, John Wu he's like stand up he stands up and he's like moves Jay's arm out of the way so he could stand up he's just like holy <laughs> fucking shit it's the fucking hard <laughs> boiled man himself that's him I had no idea so that was kind of exciting the movie sucked but <laughs> we didn't tell him that <laughs> yeah, like that. That must have been really awkward. <laughs> it's like, oh man, 
man, we can't like whisper things to each other about how <laughs> stupid this movie is. The director's sitting right here. He'll have us killed. <laughs> They'll get Xiao Yun Fat in there and start <laughs> shooting at you in slow motion. Yeah, uh, so that was that was interesting. That really was that was fun. That's that's anyway, still, yeah, but um, it's so, my brush with Wu. <laughs> the brush with the Wu. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, so I was gonna say like yeah, like the um, yeah each each movie uh, has a thing. And then like oh yeah, the, the Mission Impossible Three was actually J J Abrams, and I want to say that was like his first movie that he made. Oh, uh, I, did, I didn't even. Yeah, and um, he did that one. Then uh, the fourth, the fourth one was Brad Bird, who um, then would let later go on and do Tomorrowland. Mm-hmm. Um, and Just that was, tying it all back together. Yeah, but um, that was and that was a big deal because uh, Mission Impossible gross po- uh, um, gross pro- <laughs> gross <laughs> protocol was <laughs> <laughs> gross protocol. That's the Mad Magazine <laughs> version of that. Mad <laughs> skewers gross <laughs> Mission- protocol. Um, and like it, that was his, that was Brad Bird's first live action movie because he he had always done animation. And then this uh, fifth one uh, was done by Christopher McQuarrie, who did uh, like he he wrote uh, the Usual Suspects, and then he wrote and directed The Way of the Gun, and like he does like a lot of those like you know uh, action adventure movies. Uh, so like so what I was saying was just like you know basically just going back to it is that Tom like yeah they should probably just recast Tom Cruise, maybe Chris Pratt, maybe mm, bring that back to him. But like yeah, just anybody Not really. A bad idea. I know. Well, it needs a refresher. Yeah. He needs Tom Cruise needs to. I I don't know. I've never really been a fan of his anyway, so I can't say like oh I he needs mean, to go do other things because I really don't give a shit. Well, I mean, I've never hated Tom Cruise. I've always kind of I've always liked Tom Cruise. I've never loved Tom Cruise. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, like the, like he's like the eighties, I believe, were his heyday, and then well, he just yeah. keeps going and going. Yeah, and like, yeah, because yeah, you look at like something like Top Gun, and you're just sort of like, yeah, Tom Cruise, yeah, uh, awesome. Danger Zone, Danger Zone, and uh, but then now it's like it was like, oh, it's Tom Cruise. Yeah. I guess he looks younger than his age. It just feels like he's not... always trying yeah. to prove how he's like. No, see, look, I'm I'm pretty normal guy. I'm pretty pretty awesome, aren't I? Yeah. Like I don't know. I just always yeah, think, but because you know the whole weirdness with Scientology and everything came out, and I think he's maybe trying to just get back his popularity and something like that i don't yeah it's i think he needs to kind of like do like like yeah and like like he's an action star he does action movies and like there was that one movie i didn't see it but it was like jack reacher and it was, i heard of it, it yeah and it was supposed to be it. like him and like as like this badass guy and i remember uh, my friend pat um saying to me uh like when like we, we were like watching the trailer for it when we were like seeing some other movie and um, he said, like, hey, you know what? That looks like a pretty good movie. I don't believe Tom Cruise in that role at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, even just by seeing that short trailer. Right. And If it, it takes you out of it, yeah, out of the story, then that's... They're like, with, like, Keanu weird. Reeves in, like, John Wick, where he's, like, this badass assassin and stuff like that. And he's just this... He's supposed to be just a very quiet, like, assassin-type character. Like, you, you, you buy it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Keanu Reeves can kind of, like, pull that kind of thing where it's just, like... Like I and mean, yeah, a lot of people say he's a you know very wooden actor and he's very just like oh I'm Keanu Reeves. But at the same time, like he can pull off that kind of enigmatic character without seeming doofy and dumb and stuff like that. And well, he's, and he's, he's one of those actors where everyone says that he's the best person ever and he's uh, a saint. <laughs> he's, so it makes me love him even well, more. Well, yeah, because like, yeah, outside like the actual man himself, the actual he's, man. He's, he's supposed to be just a super awesome, awesome dude. And like, and he's one of those people that like, um, like he like he gave up like a a good chunk of his salary from the Matrix movies so he could be, to to be able to give you know to um like I think it was like the special effects team was like really like underpaid or something like that yeah and he just and he just he, just he's just like well I don't need all this fucking money yeah um I know he's and, awesome so he is awesome and so it's like so even when he uh, yeah and you know so watching John Wick and stuff like that like you feel bad when he's getting shit on and then you feel good when he gets he comes out and, and his comeuppance and he get yeah yeah. Um, so yeah. So Wet Hot American Summer, <laughs> first day of camp, is, is pretty good. Whoops, I just... Oh, and, uh, I, I don't know, I've, I've been looking through Catcher in the Rye It sounds, it's sounds Hol- right. Uh, it is Holden, I do know that, but right. Caulfield, uh, if, leave in the comments. <laughs> Bob. To see if you're... I want to know other... who's listening. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So anyway, the... the the last thing that I had, I was going to bring up was just that um, we were talking a lot about um, like Kurt Vonnegut and a lot of like books that um, uh, that we had liked uh, last uh, podcast, mm-hmm. and um, I was going to mention, and then I didn't get I didn't get a chance to mention um, that just recently 
I reread a, a children's book series that I liked when I was when I was a kid, and um, was it part of Goosebumps? No, uh-huh. uh, it was the uh, the Wayside School books. Yes, and um, so basically, it, back in these these books were very spread out. There's only three of them. It's a trilogy. <clears throat> um, uh, great, great books. But uh, it's basically my daughter reads them. Uh, yeah, they're, they're they're kids books. But and so yeah, I actually read all three in like a day because like you know. They're, they're kids books they're super easy to read mm. but um i just decided because like i remembered them and i'm just like yeah i'm gonna go you know s- s- pick those up again and um just, why not and uh the so the first the first one is called sideways stories from wayside school mm. and uh, it came out in the 70s this book which is surprising i really thought that was mid to late 80s but that must be the second one yeah that was the second the second book was uh wayside school's falling down and that was mm. late 80s uh, and then Wayside School gets a little stranger is like mid nineties. Okay, because so, I remember in the late eighties, you know, I, well they still do this. Get the little scholastic, yeah, uh, yeah, pages yeah. where you, you circle and you you give to your mom. And yeah. You're like, if you don't buy these for me, I will scream. <laughs> or at least maybe that's just my kid. Yeah. But yeah, and, and that was like a new one that came out was the second one. Yeah, the second the second one that was like eighty nine something like that. Um, but and so I was only like four years old at the time um but i remember getting into both of those but i remember in yeah i think it was like 95 i was like 10 um when that like the third one came out and like it was in i remember getting the scholastic thing uh, from mm-hmm. school and then seeing that on there i'm like, <laughs> like I, I don't know too many words to like, swear yeah this is like yeah i was like super excited it was just like sweating just like heavy breathing because <laughs> 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 it was just like there's another one there's another one there's another one and so I immediately so and yeah it was it was it was basically the, the only other ones that I would get were like the goosebumps like like I would always get like the latest goosebumps and then they, and then I just I saw that one and I want to say I think I skipped a goosebumps one because I'm like fuck whatever R.L. Stein's doing yeah Lewis Sacker has a new fucking Wayside School book out <laughs> you know I feel that way too about um uh Diary of a Wimpy Kid uh-huh. I don't know if you've read any of those no they're no. They're actually hilarious. Really? Re- yeah. Um, yeah, my, my kids, um, we have, well, we have all of them. He just released another one. And so, yeah, like, we she'll bring home the Scholastic paper, and there's a new one. And she's, They still have those? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'd imagine I, it'd be, like, all online now or something. Oh, well, it is, but they also yeah. have, you know, I, uh, I, the, I like that they, they keep the, it and like they the can circle. The super thin sheets? That, yeah, yeah, I okay. have it somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to take a look at it for nostalgia's sake. I know. It really, it's like, they have not changed. They wow. really haven't. Um, so yeah, no. and it's like the, the thin paper. and um, I f- fucking forgot what I was going to uh, say. Diary of a Wimpy Kid? Yes, yes, yes. So uh, they have another one coming out, and um, it's it's surprisingly funny. Like, they, uh, you know, my kids, we read them uh, stories before bed, and, and they're always, they want to reread these books. And usually, you know, you're, you're like, no, I yeah. read it. Well, I don't want to reread this, but I'm like, like eager the bunny to every rabbit time. gets the fucking carrot. <laughs> the end. Like what? Go to sleep. Yeah. But I, I'm totally fine with re reading these books because okay. I mean, there's just there. It's that type of humor where there's a couple of things where I'll start laughing and they it's they completely it. over their head. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love that. That's, it's funny. There was an episode of uh, Gravity Falls. Um, Gravity Falls is this is a show on like the Disney Channel. Uh, it's an animated show, mm-hmm. uh, and um, and it's it's one of those sh- shows that like you know kids love it, but then adults you know really love it too. Uh, and um, there's like a lot of really great like adult humor uh, or you know like humor. It's like and it's, it's not adult humor, but, but it's you adult, know yeah. for grown ups. So that, right. and there's 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 an episode where like uh, they're because uh, it's these two kids uh, staying with their great uncle Stan, and um, they're all getting excited about like the latest episode of the show called Duck Detective. And then, like, somebody goes, like, it's like but Grunkle Stan, isn't that a show for kids? Be like, I'll have you know that there's a lot of humor in this show that goes way over kids' heads. <laughs> and so, wink, wink. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a good wink and a nod. So anyway, um, so going back to, to Wayside School, um, basically what this is, is Wayside School is a, a, a school that um, was originally going to be uh, built. It was going to be one story and with 30 classrooms all across. But somebody flipped the blueprint, and it's a thirty-story building with a classroom on each floor, um, and so that's kind of. So and think, there's no nineteenth floor. And there's no nineteenth floor. And and there's no Ms. Zarves. There's no Ms. Zarves. And that's that's a, a running a running thing to, to know, and so it's basically all about the kids on the thirtieth on the top floor of um, Mrs. Jules's class, and um, and it's one of those things where it's just like silly things happen. 
and, and, and like it is basically just a series of like like incidents and like short stories ab- about these kids from this uh, school and uh, things that are, that are happening and it's like very silly very you know like you know whimsical but like never eye rolling like it's 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 one of things which is like it's it's there's never a time where it's just sort of like oh it's it's a magical you know like or like it's anything like that like like you know you have something like Harry Potter where you're like oh I want to go to Hogwarts and stuff like that like if you read this I like I like when I read it when I was a kid like I don't ever want to go to Wayside School right. this, it's like, is, this, this sounds is insane terrible. well of just little things of um. One of the kids gets a, uh, a tattoo, and it's of a potato. Yeah. And uh, it was just just odd. Yeah, and there's, like, Anecdotes weird... Like, there, there is, like, we just talked about Memento, Memento as well, that. there's, like, there's like a chapter oh, of the story that's, right. that's written backwards. And it was, like, and it was, and it was because, like, the, um, uh, like, a kid came in late, and then, like, uh, and it was just, and then heard the end of the story that the teacher was telling, and then uh, she was like, all right, well, here, if, you know, since you missed the beginning here, read, read it uh, uh, yourself. And she's like, well, I already know the ending. And it's just like, well, then why don't you read it backwards? So then it, you you know the ending. So then the beginning will be a surprise. And I'm like, did Christopher Nolan read Way of Silence? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and uh, and then and that that story, the story itself was backwards, and it was just like every other sentence or something like that. He was and, very creative in all of those chapters. Yeah, and it was like there's like there's like a, a story that like you needed a chart. To like in in order to understand the story, you had to like reference a chart mm-hmm. or something like that, and like there was like a weird, let's just like man, this is like some House of Leaves shit, like some real like <laughs> postmodern shit to give to kids, and it was it was it really makes them use their brains. Yeah, yeah and it's... he actually and he actually did write a um a couple of like math like math puzzle books. Yeah, we have one, and. Maybe next episode we'll try to uh, do a couple of those because <laughs> they're they're insane. Yeah, they're like yeah, it's sideways. Uh, arithmetic, arithmetic from Wayside School. It and, was very, very odd. And uh, yeah, there's the real problems. Yeah, and, and like yeah, I was, I was, I was just going like, I was like looking at them, going like, oh, these are kids' problems. And I'm like, I don't understand any of this. <laughs> Buh. Buh. Um, but there was a there was a uh, a thing at the end that just said like, yeah, a lot of t- a lot of teachers would like write to to Lewis Sacker and just say like like what huh <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Um, but um, the thing about the Wayside School books, um. Was that like Lewis Sacker had, had admitted that one of his uh, biggest inspirations was Kirk Vonnegut, and like reading him now as you know as now as, as a fan of, of Kirk Vonnegut, I realized that like this does seem like like if Kirk Vonnegut had written kids books, like it has that kind of feel to it, and there's like a lot of weird messages that aren't like, immediately apparent. Like there's at one point where um one of the kids uh, comes across these three men with like briefcases, and um. They said like uh like it was like was like, why did you come down here and, mm. and the kids just like I, I just didn't want to do what I was told They're like so you want to be free it's like, but if you want to be free you can't be safe so which one which one is it do you want to be f- safe or do you want to be free and he's just like I want to be free and so they like give him a, a contract to sign and then that's it and then he goes back upstairs and sits on the floor and the, and then Mrs Jules just looks at him and just goes all right and then just continues to to. To to teach. to teach and so and it was just a weird kind of heady thing to throw into a children's book. Oh yeah, it's, that's and, some deep shit. Right yeah, there. and like yes. and yeah, and and that was the thing. Like reading it now, and like each book, like the first book starts off very much just like a like a kid's book of like they're they're you know getting rid of their 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 evil teacher, and then Mrs. Jules comes in and she's the better teacher, and it's just mm-hmm. like oh, it's just you know a fun little kids thing, and it just it just keeps getting weirder and weirder. And there's just a lot of other like things that happen in it, and like yeah, there's a thing with like the nineteenth floor. Because there is no 19th floor. It says, like, Miss Zars teaches on the 19th floor. But there is no Miss Zars because there is no 19th floor. And at one point, like, one of the kids uh, finds themselves in Miss Zar- Miss Zars' class. And, you know, and, like... With and, all these students that don't exist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, like, yeah, and there's this weird existential, like, like stuff. That, yeah, like, once again, it's real heady stuff for, like, kids to yeah. think about. And um, so, yeah, it, it's, it's really interesting. And they did make... They made a, an animated series... From Wayside School, like in like 2007, 2008, something like that. Like Michael Sarah was like the voice of like the main character or something like that, and um, and it was not very good. Yeah, I don't see that as an animated series because I think they they work best as just use your own imagination as you're. I, you're I think I think it. I think they could uh, do a um, like an animated series or like a, like an animated movie or something like that, but like they would need to stay pretty close to the source material. Like they made you know the Wayside School like 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 a regular kids cartoon of just like oh everything's silly and wacky and like then the, it becomes the magic school bus. I mean like so like well not even like that but like you know like it it, it felt like 
you know, nothing against, you know, those those mid 90s and, and 2000s uh, like Cartoon Network shows. I, I think those are great shows. But um, like it's just it's just very silly and random. Uh-huh. And the thing a thing about Wayside School was that it was everything was there were things that seemed random and they seemed silly they and they purpose. seemed over the top but at the same time like it was presented in such a way where you didn't question it right away until after you're like that's weird wait <laughs> <laughs> right and like and it, it was it was presented in this very specific way and it was the interesting thing about it was that like each character had their own boundaries so there would be like one character would get really weirded out by one thing, and then like, but then something else that's totally weird, they'd be like, "No, that's fine. What what are you talking about?" Mm -hmm. And uh, and so it was it was an interesting the way that they laid it out. Uh, it's also that, kind of a, a a nod to you know how all children are different and all. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like stuff, each like, of the kids were drastically different from one another. Oh yeah. Like you're all unique and you know. And so like that, but um. It's just like, like everyone else but like uh, i mean well that's you funny you should mention that because that that's what that's what it really feels like reading this is that like the, you're all unique but that doesn't mean you're better than everyone else exactly and then and that's that's kind of how i felt if, when i was reading it i was just like, like if no, kids just knew that then i think the world would be a better place because <laughs> like, um, like, there, there was a, a story where like this uh this uh, this girl was a really fast artist she was like she would draw really fast and uh, and then everyone was like really impressed. Well, like it's really great, you know. And and that you know, like she drew like you know ten drawings in like you know like one you know art class, you know, like that. And then Mrs. Jules was just sort of like, yeah, but you're not taking your time on it, you know. Just because mm -hmm. you you're, you do it fast doesn't mean it's you know better and so like that. And she just you know, basically she kind of tore her down a bit. Like <laughs> it's just like yes, it's not fucking good. <laughs> right, yeah. just because you cranked out a bunch, it's yeah, yeah. Like, and, quantity over quality. Yeah, so like that. And, and and so yeah, so it was it was one of those things where just like. You know, always, always improve. You know, even if you if you're satisfied, always improve and things like that. So it's just it was a lot of stuff where it's just That's like a good good lesson there. And uh, and and yeah, and there's like another thing where it's like a, a kid couldn't count properly. He would always uh, arrive at the at the proper like number. She'd be like, all right, how many potatoes are on there? He'd be, and he'd be like, eight, seven, three, four, ten. There's ten. And and, and she's like. No, there's not ten there. Yes, there is, but right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the process. It, yeah. it, was, it was it was a silly little little thing there, and then eventually, like, you'd be like, all right, how many? Like, all right, how many? Like, whatever apples are on here, and there's like five apples, and he's just like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten. I was like, was like was something like that, and then she's just like, no, there's there's five. It was like, I didn't count right. You counted right, but you gave you know like. <laughs> so it was once again, it was it was kind of that thing, kind of teaching kids that like you know there's there's you know. There's a right and wrong way, and there's a gray area, and there's you know things like that. There's like there's these weird little lessons that you don't think to teach kids, right? That's, and, you know, actually, I didn't even think about any of that when I was a kid reading it. You know, it's just those are oh, yeah. these are funny stories. Yeah, but then, yeah, totally. Yeah, you look back and like, oh, there was there was a lot to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it was it was because that was the thing. It wasn't they didn't beat you over the head with it. He he did it in a really funny way. It was a very sarcastic book mm -hmm. too. There was like any time that there was any kind of whimsy. Like, somebody would always just tear it down by doing something stupid or saying something stupid. Well, and... it's like these Disney shows that are now on. One of them is Girl Meets World, which is a... The Boy Meets the boy, World Yeah, the Boy spin -off. Meets World spinoff, where they have uh, Topanga and Corey have a, a kid now. and Or they have two kids, and so yeah. one of them now is a teenager, which is just weird because they're about my age and, like... I mean, I just I just turned thirty four, and they've got like I don't know. I think she's about sixteen or something. Like, but what? <laughs> what were you doing, Topanga? <laughs> so, the premise though is is just like any other show, really, of just trying to make it in this crazy world kind of thing. And yeah, but it gets. I guess the only word I can describe it as schmaltzy. Like, yeah. I mean, it's full house schmaltzy, yeah. where there's ev there's always a tender learning moment mm -hmm. in every episode, and and I don't think that that, and that was, really teaches anything. It's yeah. just kind of that's the eye rolling part of yeah. like, oh, you're gonna teach me a lesson now, huh? And that was kind of the another thing. Go back to the wayside school. Sometimes just random shit would happen, and there's no moral, right? And and like, and I think that's, and that's the, life, and yeah, and that's why it's like, <laughs> and um, um. And yeah, yeah, I was just sort of just like, oh well, that happened. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> awesome. Anyway, yeah, and so right, because not everything has to mean something. Um, but um, also going back real quick, but to uh, the um, the way the Wayside School show, um, the one thing I was just trying to 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 uh, the point I was trying to get across to, to that one was uh, like it was I I just I found it was 
that they had missed the point completely because it, like there wasn't any you know morals and there wasn't any like anything like that. It was kind of like those Cartoon Network shows where it's just like it's just very silly, it's very funny, and it's right. like okay, but it was like it was very random, but like it it but it, but it's not random. Once again, like it's the Wayside School books, like they're they're random, but they're like totally not. They're presented like they're not random at all, and it like and there are certain things that like you can tell they missed the point of because like there's um at the end of the the second book. Um, the uh, the entire school is like half destroyed by a stampede of cows, and they all just kind of like uh, like rush into the school and like and so then it it takes like several months for them to like try and get all of the cows out of the school. But then there's like this this one cow that like um that you know like they they still hear mooing. It's a, it's just around somewhere, but uh, they can't find. And like that's kind of the, the joke behind it. And um um in the show. Uh, it's just you basically it's there's just cows randomly around. It's yeah, just, it's just sort of like, but that's not the but but right. no like you know like that's it's like not, see how funny kids there's yeah. a cow in the classroom. Yeah, it's just like yeah, and it's just sort of like with, without you know it's like it's in, 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 that, that wasn't supposed to be a random thing that was supposed right. to be like there was a, there was an explanation for it and like it was like of like you know the stamp like they actually explained the, the the stampede and how it happens and then how that is used as a a, a way to kind of like um, you know. You just close the school and when they reopen and like it's like there's there was a point to it and it's just sort of like and like and when they don't explain it and they don't do anything it's like like oh there's just cows everywhere k you know it's like <laughs> and then michael sarah says something funny and then that's the joke you know it's like <laughs> um so yeah and it was it was an animated show it was not actually michael because you know, at, at this point like 2007 2008 like that's michael sarah was already you know <laughs> grown up yeah <laughs> um and um but so yeah it's not weird it, yeah it was not it was not very good um and yeah it was it was definitely one of those things it, like i remember like watching it and like the the comment there was like a comments like section uh, on it and it was everyone just going like this is nothing like the books like it's like this is <laughs> they've clearly missed the point completely and uh <laughs> just making it for the sake of making it yeah but um but to your point like yeah like going going by like the girl meets world it's just sort of like like that's that's all they get now and um there was an interview with um uh, Lauren Faust, who um, Lauren, Lauren Faust, My Little Pony. She yeah, she she developed the new like My Little Pony stuff, and she was talking about one of the reasons that she had like left uh, was because like that Hasbro was like dead set on like every time she would want to do something with the show and be like, hey, wouldn't it be interesting to do this? And then they'd be like, no, like, we can't sell toys that way. It's like that, and it was it was interesting, like because and she had said that like one of the things that they had want that Hasbro and and like the, the the company had wanted that every single episode needs to have a moral. And and, yeah. and she and so so like a lot of times they would they would be writing an episode and it would be a really funny episode and it would just be silly and and kind of you know kind of random mm -hmm. kind of you know uh, and then but then they'd be like oh there's no moral right. fuck you know like and so it would just be like there was they should just throw one in at the very end of it doesn't even have to do with the story yeah just put it in there yeah and so it's so it was it was, inter it was an interesting inter it, it, when like yeah because Lauren Faust was was had before had done like Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. And um, like Powerpuff Girls and stuff like that, and those shows were just sort of like, just, yeah, just every once in a while it would just be random craziness. Like there's an episode of Foster's Home that just ends with uh, one of the characters just devouring cookies, and it was just, and it was just it was, and as the credits roll, it's just oh, 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 that and just sort of like this is a good show, <laughs> <laughs> something I can get behind. Yeah, I think we've talked enough. I think so too. <laughs> we are. Um... Yeah, and I'm I'm getting kind of hungry. Yeah, gonna, me too. Yeah, we're we're gonna go. Uh, speaking of cookies, maybe we'll See go get cookies. some. Yeah, let's go have some cookies. Um, when you're in your thirties, you can just eat cookies anytime you want. That is that is true. Although you will not be able to um, lose the cookies from your body. Well, you can if you if toss you throw, your cookies. If you toss your cookies. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 metabolism and vomit jokes. This That's is. Right. We're done. I think we're done. Well, thank you for joining us, and uh, hopefully next time uh, Tom will be with us. But um, yeah, Tom did say that he had a few things that he was going to talk about, so I guess he'll talk about it and uh, we next did, time. we did miss him. Indeed. Yeah. All right. Goodbye. See you later.